Hi guys, so we're going to work on trying to show you how to put the machine together and how I've got it set up to give me just your regular old heavy whipping cream. So, first of all, you want the screw, you want the screw to be flush. I found that that setting seems to work best for our cow. Can you turn it to this side? Yeah, like that. So it's just flush. That's that set screw. All right. And then we're going, then the white part goes inside of this this um this part and you slide it up in there like that there we go okay so now we've got to put all the little cone pieces together so there are two different pieces so you have one that has the little bump underneath the hole directly underneath the hole like this one and then you have one that does has has no bump right underneath the hole so you just have to alternate the two so it goes it goes um, no bump and then a bump and so there you go no bump and then a bump And then this part here goes on top and then you have your little nut that you have to put on like that and you use the key to tighten it down as tight as you can. Okay, so now we're going to put the machine together to get ready to pour in the milk. So the first part is the part that we were just dealing with with all the different little cones. And you just seat that in there and I usually give it a spin to make sure it's spinning freely. Then you have two of these of these um, with the spouts and so you want the bigger one to be on the bottom. It also, on my particular version, it has a little notch in the bigger one. Uh, the notch doesn't seem to correspond to anything, it just isn't, it's only in the bigger one. So then you put the small, the smaller one on top of the bigger one, then you put the top piece on and the float and then your big container so all right so once you have your bowl on top you have to set it up and there's a little notch here in the front that that is also where the hole is on the inside the little notch that's on the inside and so you need to set up your little handle so that the holes all line up and then when you want to close it you turn it to the side then then you when you're ready to open it you turn it back to there so we always start off with it closed so that it um, the machine has time to run before we get it up to speed before you actually start putting the milk through then I just have this set up because this is on the side of my sink and I use a quart jar to collect the cream I switch it out with another quart jar whenever I need to and I dump it into one of my half gallon um, milk jugs that was you know basically one of the I poured the milk out of then I have it to where I actually can put it down into a sink which is really nice and when my container there gets too full I just let it run in the sink so I'm lazy like that but then I can dump it and then come back so that's the way I have it set up one of the most important things though living here in Maine I've noticed I cannot get the milk down here fast enough it's too cooled off I have to heat it back up so what we've we've started doing here is we just save a few days milk and we take that milk and then we strain it we skim it if we're if we're wanting cream so I'm doing 12 gallons today and we'll see how much cream I get. My, calf, my cow is holding back a bit because of her calf. So I'm not getting as high a cream content as I normally do, but we'll see what we get. So I have my milk ready. I'll fill it up and I'll show you how that all goes. Okay guys, so we've got our milk in here. It's at 100 degrees. So I just heated it up back up on the stove. And now we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna wait till it gets up to speed. Oops, got jars rattling over here. 
Sometimes if it rattles too much, you have to press down on it at the top. Some of that is because it does tend to do this whenever it very first starts. Once the milk starts going through it, it does do better. Push down on it again. All right, it's up to speed though, so you can go ahead and turn it. There we go. So it, it's because partially my sink is a little bit off kilter. So there goes the skim milk and here comes the cream. So one of the things that was really hard for me to get used to was that because this milk is so warm, the cream looks thin, <laughs> but it's not. So we did like a, this experimentation with the set with that little screw to, to, to determine what the cream, where it needed to be set to get the cream at the right level. So this right here for us, um, my cow is two months fresh. And so this right now with that set screw just even on that white piece, it is the perfect heavy whipping cream from the store kind of um, setting. And so we get, um, you know, that's, that's what we're used to. That's what we use the majority of the time for making ice cream and whipped cream and putting in our coffee. Now, if I get the thicker stuff, that's great. But right now, this is where I'm at and I'm doing good with this. So um, it's going down now. You can see we opened that little hole and everything is going well. So I'll let you know at the end how much we ended up with. 12, about 12 gallons of milk, a little less because my gallons don't quite hold a gallon. So we, but we count it as a gallon. So we have about 12 gallons of milk to, to process. All right, so we're done skimming. We, we, we calculated it out once we were done. We had about 10 and a half gallons of milk, true measurement, not our you know little bits off the top. So we ended up with a gallon and a half of cream and about eight gallons of skim. So I still have that full. That'll probably go to the chickens. And then these are all gonna be made into cheese. So that's what we ended up with today. And we also did pull just a bit of, we ran the skim, skim cream through again and we got some of that because we want to check on how that did as far as we'll watch how it separates tomorrow and we'll see if that there's any more that can be pulled out of a second run through and I'll let you know the results of that. Okay, thanks.